So my wife came up to me sometime back with an idea for a desk that she wanted built. All she really had was the pictures that she had found on the internet and sort of some basic non-specific things. Mostly she wanted it to be white and in her words, she wanted the drawer fronts to be made out of wood. So to begin this project, much like a lot of the other ones that I build, I started off breaking down parts with a combination of the table saw and the MFT. The most important thing anytime you're batching out parts like this, especially if you have yourself a cut list set up, is consistency. Not so much that all the parts reach an exact measurement, but that all the parts are the same length. Once I had all the initial parts broken down, the two cabinet boxes that would make up each side of the desk, I would start to cut biscuits so that I could join them together with a combination of pocket screws and biscuits. The biscuits really more to help with alignment and the pocket screws to hold everything together until the glue dries. If you've ever built anything with pocket screw joinery before, you know there's a tendency for parts to wanna to slide around, especially when you're driving the screws. So this is another place where the biscuits really help and also it doesn't hurt to add a couple of clamps too. It just really helps hold everything in place while you can drive those screws and keep your parts in alignment the way you want them to be. I used a spacer block on each end to be able to give the amount of spacing to inset the cabinets on both sides of the bottom side of the desk. And then uh, grid work of uh, screws on the inside to attach it to the top. This brace between the two cabinets here was sort of added late in the game because I was afraid of the, the cabinets sort of pulling themselves apart anytime you picked up and moved the desk around. Maybe it's a little bit overkill, but it just seemed like it was necessary at the time. And I think it ended up being a pretty nice design element. I cut out all of the parts that I would need for the edge banding from some four quarter poplar that I had milled up prior to this step. I mitered the edge banding to wrap around the top of the desk and I used biscuits to attach them and also help with the alignment. One thing that I did was I offset the height of the biscuits on the trim a little bit lower than I did on the desk, which would raise the trim up just slightly proud of the surface so that I could plane that flush and get a nice flush top all the way around the desk. Once I had the top completed, I could then wrap the cabinet boxes on the front and the back of the desk.
I decided to add a small little detail on the front styles, if you will, on the front of the cabinet of the desk, just down at the bottom because I, I didn't want it to look too square and blocky looking. So I figured cutting a slight taper down at the bottom would give it just a little bit of extra flair, if you will. I added a strip to the top and bottom of the brace that connected the two cabinet boxes on the back of the desk. And I really feel like this helped look, made it look a little bit less like an afterthought and more like a design detail. Somewhere between that point and the next step here is where things, uh, I guess went a little awry with this desk project. It kind of turned into a little bit of an odyssey. I think there was about somewhere between two, two and a half years in between the last step of edge banding and me adding these backs to the cabinets right here in this step. Um, several different issues along the way with equipment problems that I was uh, working with. On top of that, we ended up moving in the middle of me working on this project. So you probably notice a completely different shop now. I've got about twice the space I had before. And it's definitely, especially for a project this big, a lot nicer as far as the amount of space I have to move around and work on something like this. Because of the face frames that I'd added to the front of the cabinets, I needed a way to pad out the drawer slides, if you will, so that once you slid one of the drawers out, the drawer slide wouldn't hit the face frame. So I just milled up some scrap poplar that I had lying around the shop and glued and stapled it to the inside of the cabinet boxes. I used a spacer to inset the drawers, which is a little piece of MDF that you see on the front, and um, a spacer to uh, set the height on either side of the cabinet box on both cabinets. When it came time to actually cut out the drawer parts themselves, I had a couple of oversized pieces that I was going to cut the sides out of both drawers from that I slid into the cabinet box itself um, up against the drawer slide and then measure the distance between those two sandwiched together all the way over to the other slide. And this would give me the amount of length that I would need 
to make the front and back of the cabinet or the front and back of the drawer so that it would fit inside the cabinet. You're probably sensing a theme at this point, and uh, that theme would pretty much be that I like biscuits. I did go back and add staples to each one of the drawer boxes, just as sort of, um, Extra insurance, I guess. It probably was a little bit of overkill. I'm pretty sure that the glue and the biscuits would hold together just fine. But, you know, me being me, I figured I needed to add a little extra. So, there you go. Each drawer on uh, both sides of the cabinet boxes have a two inch difference in height from the bottom to the top. And so basically here I'm just marking a line on the side of each drawer box so that I can locate the drawer slide to fit it exactly where it needs to be to give the proper amount of spacing so that the drawers will properly function. So after changing my mind about 14 times in the direction that I would actually go in making the drawer fronts itself, I finally went back with what my wife originally wanted was some kind of solid wood drawer front. And I had this walnut lying around the shop that I figured if I was careful in how I cut it and planned it out, I could get the sapwood to line up in the middle of the the pieces of wood that I would need to join together for each uh, drawer front. This would not only give a really cool effect of the sap wood running through the center of each drawer face, but it would also be a much better way of sort of hiding that seam of the two boards where they join to make a wide enough board for each drawer front.
As you can tell here, I employed a little bit of help to run each one of these um, freshly joined boards through my drum sander. I can only imagine what conversation this was that was actually going on. I can't really remember at this point. I can tell obviously by how excited she is that it had to be something pretty important. Probably something to the effect of, uh, don't screw it up, Dad. Once I had run those parts to the drum sander, I squared each one of them up and cut them to fit exactly in each one of the cabinet boxes. Um, I could then take them and cut them down at the table saw to their exact height. This was without a doubt one of the most nerve wracking parts of the project because I knew if I screwed one of these cuts up, I basically wasted all of that time and effort that I was taking to match the grain and run the sapwood up through the middle of each drawer face. I used playing cards on both sides to ensure that I had a proper amount of spacing all the way around each one of the drawer faces themselves. I think the spacing ended up being somewhere around uh, an eighth inch to three sixteenths of an inch, somewhere around in there. Once I had each one of them cut down and attached from the inside with screws, I could then take them all back off again, do the joyous, joyous sanding, and then wipe a simple oil finish on each one of them. I really love the way this uh, Watco oil finish uh, applies. It's very easy to apply to any sort of uh, project and it looks great. Changing venues once again, I'm here at the body shop where I work at every day. Um, at the point you see it right now, I've already done an immense amount of sanding on it, primed it with a white primer, sanded that, and am wiping it down once again in preparation for the sealer and the paint.
I got my good friend Jesse here helping me out, mixing up some of the color and the mid coat and running it through the shaker in preparation for spraying. Once all the color has been mixed, then it's finally go time. The process for most paint jobs would be sealer, base coat, and then a clear coat, whether that be flat or shiny. The only difference with this particular one, which is where we added um, a pearl mid coat over top of the white base, is just basically you're just adding another step. It's sealer, base coat, the mid coat, which is just pearl, it goes over top of the white base and then your clear coat. I did end up using a flat clear on this project, uh, mainly because I, I didn't want this piece to end up looking like a piece of plastic. I still wanted it to maintain somewhat of its uh, wood look as far as the desk goes. And I didn't want it to be super shiny and the only downside to that is it did mute the pearl color just a little bit, but in person, the pearl still really stands out and looks really cool. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the decision to go with the flat clear. It was really hard to pick it up with the camera. Um, you can definitely, if you look in some of these shots, see some of the gold pearl in it, but it's just, it's, it's really hard to photograph. You just have to, uh, trust me and know that it looks really, really awesome in person. To install the brass pulls for the drawer fronts themselves, I'm employing the use of the True Position Tools cabinet hardware jig. And I've never actually installed cabinet hardware any other way, so I don't technically have a reference for you know, how much more difficult that would be, but I can definitely tell you that this is the gravy way of doing it. Like pretty much once you set the jig, uh, you're gonna get the accurate spacing and exactly where you want the holes drilled each time. It just kind of dummy proofs it, if you will, and makes it really simple to do. Uh, one small mistake that I made using the jig at first, like when I drilled the first hole, is that I had the, the top plate that adjusts to set the spacing. I had that, I guess not technically backwards, but it's better to turn it around the other way whenever you're mounting uh, or drilling these kind of holes in uh, a, drawer, a flat drawer face like this. And so by flipping it around, it allows the jig to sit completely flush to the face of the drawer front itself and prevent it from rocking as you're drilling it. My wife and I are extremely pleased with the final outcome of this desk. I think all the little details really came out great. I really love the way the, the stark white uh, paint on the, the desk itself in contrast to the, the walnut drawer fronts, just really look great. And I think the brass pulls themselves really give it that classic sort of timeless look. And in the morning and evening sun coming through the windows, the pearl and the paint job look just awesome. I just, I wish there was a better way to photograph it so that you guys could actually see it. 
I want to give a big shout out to Pure Bond Plywood for sponsoring this project. They actually supplied me with all of the plywood that I built this actual desk out of. And if you're looking for a, a place to purchase this plywood, you can go to your local Home Depot and find this stuff. It's They don't use formaldehyde and the layers don't have gigantic voids in them, much like a lot of the plywood that you find in those box doors and it's pretty competitively priced. I wanna thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you're not already, you can follow me on all the social media platforms. I have all of those linked down below. That's pretty much all I got for you this time. So until next time, happy trails. Thanks for watching.